It's time now for our business segment with France 24's Charles Pellegrin. Hi, Charles. Uh, Hi, Jeannie. This Thursday, the U.S. Federal Reserve is hosting its annual economic symposium in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and that could give some more clues as to the direction of U.S. monetary policy. That's right. Uh, for the, the next two days, this uh, small town next to Grand Teton National Park will uh, become a sort of mecca for central bankers, policymakers, and economists from around the world, the highlight of which will be a speech by Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell on Friday. Last year, he made headlines with a very succinct speech. Uh, inflation was too high, back then over 8%, and the U.S. Central Bank would do whatever it takes to bring it down to the target 2%. And by whatever it takes, he meant raising interest rates, in effect increasing the cost of borrowing money to slow down consumer spending and in turn bring prices down. So what's the picture looking like now one year later? Well, uh, if uh, the Federal Reserve raised its rates steadily uh, throughout the year, we're about to see that uh, that graph show up. The first hikes were bigger, and over time, uh, they got smaller, settling in July at a target range of 5.25 to 5.5 percent. You can see there. And in parallel, the inflation rate climbed down. This graph that we're coming up now uh, shows a longer time span, but it really shows us how much inflation spiked over the target 2% mark. That's the line in red. Starting in 2021, after the large stimulus we saw during the COVID pandemic, and then even more after the shock to the system provoked by Russia's invasion of Ukraine and its impact on energy and food markets. And as you can see, the drop in inflation came around the same time that the Fed started its rate hikes from a peak of 9.1% annual inflation in June 2022. The U.S. Consumer Price Index currently stands at 3.2 percent. All right, so that sounds positive, but is it still too early to say it's mission accomplished? Well, the target rate is at 2 percent, and it doesn't just need to reach 2 percent, it needs to stay at 2 percent. So the consensus is that rates will stay high for a sustained amount of time. But financial markets will be hanging on to every word Powell says in his speech tomorrow for clues as to when they might stop rising and even be cut. As a reminder, lower interest rates makes uh, borrowing cheaper and makes investments on the stock market more attractive, thereby boosting asset prices. One motive of satisfaction from a year ago is that worries that raising interest rates could push the U.S. economy into a recession have so far failed to materialize, and the U.S. labor market remains robust. Annual GDP growth in June stood at 2.6 percent, and the unemployment rate stood at 3.5 percent in July. Now, among the many people who will be paying attention to all of this are policymakers in developing nations. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, when the Fed when the Fed raises interest rates, it has a tendency of making the U.S. dollar stronger compared to other currencies. And because the U.S. dollar is the reserve currency of choice internationally and because it's used to settle a large number of international transactions, the moves that the U.S. Federal Reserve makes to deal with domestic issues like inflation end up having global ramifications. A stronger dollar makes importing goods more expensive, which is a problem for many developing nations whose economies tend to export raw materials and import finished manufactured products. It also makes paying back debt more expensive uh, for sovereign nations because that debt is priced in dollars. And this is the reason that the BRICS countries are discussing de-dollarization plans, ways that emerging and developing nations can reduce their reliance on the greenback. Charles, thank you so much for that. France 24's business editor, Charles Pellegrin.